indigenous ways of knowing, considerations for researchers working in indigenous communities, reciprocity presented by the Center for Native Child and Family Resilience. Paulette Running Wolf, PhD, Enrolled Blackfeet Tribal Member, CEO Running Wolf and Associates. Often the community never knows what happens. What was the results of that? What did we learn out of that? What, what did we get back out of that? One of the things that we've done in our institutional review board is request right up front on the application, all right, how can you reciprocate back to the community? In the context of research and evaluation, reciprocity can be thought of as the balance, equilibrium, or congruence that exists between researchers and research participants. You're getting this information. We want to know what it is you can con contribute. And in some cases, it was, and we helped give them ideas, train a data programmer to look at data in a certain way, um, data entry, right? maybe, and leaving that data set with them. Researchers should ask themselves, what am I bringing to, taking from, and leaving the community? It's not just always about me, me, me. I take the data set with me. We, we examine it, we analyze it, we interpret it without input. But involving them every step of the way is really important. And so, like I mentioned earlier, it builds skills and it leaves that piece there. So thinking about how maybe they do a community presentation as a contribution back when they finish, that's part of it because if they don't do it, then we're not going to be open to another application from that investigator. That's We've just made a decision as a board not to do that. So we continually look for ways to make sure that there's that element of openness and contribution and joining and connectedness. And if they can't make that community presentation, well, they darn well better do something else to replace it. And within a certain period of time. And that's just the way I feel. I think we need to be able to empower communities to pick this up on their own. And they will someday. They'll be, I, I see it happening here and there, small pieces, communities stepping up and saying, I'm interested in looking at this aspect of intervention in our community. I want to try to see if this works, if we can really provide that connection and we can show that all of these connections to ceremonials, to uh, naming, what have you, if those work, we're going to use them. And they make those determinations. We don't. And that knowledge builds and they reach out and they pull others in too because that's the way it is in Native communities. And that's part of the humbleness of Native people. We don't step up and showcase ourselves. We do not do that. We offer suggestions. We, you know, we don't, we don't function in that way. We don't even think in that way. It wouldn't occur to you to, to take credit, this is my theory, you know, and, and start that competitive angle that Western society insists upon. Rather, it's ours, and we share that credit, and we join in, and we celebrate it, and that's what's exciting, and that's what we're about for the people we serve. They don't serve us. We serve them. The Center for Native Child and Family Resilience was funded by the Children's Bureau, Administration for Children and Families, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, under Cooperative Agreement number 90CA1853. The contents of this product are solely the responsibility of JBS International Incorporated and do not necessarily reflect the official views of the Children's Bureau.